Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of this week's lesson. This one won't be as long, I don't think. Um, and I apologize, the first video had some weird sound in it. You can hear my voice, but there's a... I'll have to fix that later in the week. Um, but it has like some type of screeching sound to it happening. I'm not sure what happened. Anyhow, um, hopefully the sound sounds better. I tested it, it looked like it was going to work. So this week, or this week, this second one, so let me create a new, oh, not that. Let's create a new tab here. Uh, so new SQL, we'll save this as, let me do CMPS 160 mod three, no more two. All right, this one we're gonna talk about how to code summary queries. Um, we're working with uh, roll up, grouping, um, if statements, having statements, and so forth. So I'll just kind of get into it. So some of the syntax that we'll be using are um, average, uh, sum for summary, we already did that, min for minimum, max for max, and count. So two of those we already used, so those won't be new. Um, so we know what the count is at this point. Count is just to get a total of items. So if you wanted to get a total of something from a table, like, Let's leave the AP table and go over to the EX table here. And so let's say we want to get a total customer. So we do use EX and we do select counts from customers. And run our query and there you go. You have 24 customers. Now you can use summary in it. You could do whole, all kinds of different things. Um, now we did count right here, but let's say we want to do an add statement. Um, we could do count and we could say as a uh, number of customers. Run it. Now you have a column called number of customers. Summary query. All right. All right. What do we do? Oh, we didn't do anything yet. All right. Sorry. Talked about that, sorry. Took a break, came back, and forgot where I was at. All right, let's see here. All right, so <coughs> we'll be using average sum, uh, min, max on certain queries. Um, so I think, and distinct. All right, so just trying to look at some stuff here. All right, so let's do this. First thing will be a distinct. So what's a distinct query? It, pulls all data. So let's say we select everything from customers and we do this here. And we shouldn't have any dupes here. I'm trying to find a dupe. Um, let me find a data that has duplicates. Something that has dupes. Let's see if employees could be, okay. So, Oh, perfect. All right, so let's do this. Um, we'll do employees, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we pull from employees table. Now, there aren't any duplicates, but a distinct is to grab everything. So, for example, let's say that I only wanted to grab the department, department number only. Okay. So, if I do that, you see I have all these records. So let's do an order by it. Let's say order by the, na the name of the column, department number. And we'll say descending order. Okay. Run it. All right. So we have two sixes. We have two fours. We have three twos. So really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine records. Okay. Let's say we did a distinct search on that. So let's say we did select distinct department. Let's just copy this. Paste it there. And now let's put the distinct in there. And now let's run it and see what we get. See that right there? That's a distinct. It takes out the duplicate records and only accounts for the records that are in a single value. So you could do a group by, which would do the same thing. 
So if you did a group by, you could do select uh, department number from employees, group by department number, and you'll get the same result as the distinct. All right, I lied to you. Why not? From group by number, limit zero. What? Um, oh, be nice if I spell it right. All right, let's see if I keep lying to you. All right, I didn't lie that time. So it did, one, it did them in ascending order, but the thing is, you notice that they, those records are not duplicate. So those are two ways that you get rid of dupes on a group by or a distinct query. Okay. Um, let's see. Min and max. Um, let's find a, let's go to, let's go to paid invoices to see what we got here. All right, we can use paid invoices as our query. So, um, all right, what can we do here? Um, all right, so let's query paid invoices. So let's put this in our, I don't know why it doesn't work. Paid invoices. So this will be, uh, da, da, da. we'll use rounding on this one. I think we'll use rounding or average. Um, let's do the round function. All right, so we'll do select and we will do round and we will round the average and we'll grab, oh, I should have pulled the query up real quick. Select all from paid invoices first. So I have something to look at. All right, cool. Now let's do average. We'll say invoice total. Invoice total. And we're going to do comma two. And what that means is we want two decimals. Now we know we have two decimals, but let's say there was four or five or whatever. We only want to show two decimals in our average. And then we'll call it as, now I'm gonna show you a different way of doing something. You know, like we've been typing as, we could just type the name of the column. We could forget about as and just say average uh, invoice total. By doing this, it knows it's an as statement. Then I will do, oh, what else can I do? Give me the max min, M-I-N. Give me the minimum payment total. And we'll just keep it as payment total. And we'll do from the name of the table, which is paid invoices. And um, we'll do a where clause, where We'll say payment date is greater. Let's see what dates that we have here, guys. Let's okay, so all five. All right, so let's do this. It's less than uh, 2018.05.15. And what I'll do here is I'll put less than or equal. So if it's on the 15th or less, and we want data. So let's see what we get, guys. And run it. All right, so average invoice total was $2,468.14. And the minimum payment was nine ninety five, and um, And that was on the 15th. Now, what I could do is to double check my work works. Is I could do this. Let's take this out for a second. And just let, have this right here and see if I get the same total. Because I want to see if that min is still the same. It should be. Because we just round that one up. It was, yeah, perfect. So just verifying everything is the same. Um, we could also do max as well. So max and min give you the 
min means the minimum, the lowest, and max gives you the highest. And we'll say, um, let's do this here. Um, this would probably make more sense. So max, oops, max payment total. And up here we can make it min. Perfect. <coughs> Very perfect. All right, let's run it again. There you go. We have our min and our max, which is 26,000. So we could do a difference. You can even do a summary and subtract the differences. So you could say, um, let's say you wanted to be crazy. And well, you could say, give me min payment total, actually max payment total minus min payment total. And then we'll do as um, difference. Payment difference. And that should create another table here. Oh, I didn't like that because we have to do that in parentheses. All right. So no big deal. Um, we'll leave that one alone for now. Just have to, cause it doesn't recognize that that's a column. Max payment total. Hmm. MA payment total. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Uh, just me getting a little fancy here. So we got that. All right. What else do we have? Um, so we talked about min, max. We talked about average at this point. We talked about count. Um, so the summary queries are just doing summaries of stuff. Um, using a round average, uh, using a sum, not much really in this chapter, uh, having clause we didn't talk about. Um, so let me do a having clause. So we will use the invoice table from the AP. Well, we could use an EX. Um, this one right here will be having, oops. Having. So let's see here. Uh, let me pull up that data real quick. Perfect. All right, so I need to look at the data. So we'll type in select um, invoice date. Uh, we'll do a count on the, we'll call it uh, invoice quantity. All right, and then we'll do a sum of the invoice total. And we'll call it, um, this will be as invoice summary from, what's the name of the table? Invoices. We'll do a group by, and we'll group it on, on invoice. Uh, do we have a date here? Do invoice date, yep. Perfect, all right, having class. We'll do a having, we'll say having invoice date between, not my favorite word to use, but between two different dates. So we'll say 2018, oops, 05, 01 and 2018 05 31 between May 30th and May 31st and then we'll say and when the count is greater than one and the summary of invoice total is greater than say 200 then we'll do order by invoice date descending. So what we're saying here is give us the invoice date, which is this here. Give us the quantity, that's the account of the quantity. Give us a summary of the invoice. Then we're grabbing from invoice, we're grouping it. So we're getting only the distinct values. Then we're adding onto that query. We're using the having clause, which allows us to do calculations. So it allows us to say, hey, give us everything 
between this. Um, also, while you're at it, give us n count is greater than one. You can't do you can't do this. You can't say oh, give me where invoice date or hold on, where counts is greater than one because it won't work. You have to do it with the having clause. Okay. So if we run this real quick, we'll see if we get any data. And it didn't like it. Why? EX doesn't exist. Um, hmm. Am I in the right table? Oh, I think it's called something else. Hold on. Give me a second. Oh, what the heck? I was like, where was I running my query at? Oh, paid invoices. Okay. So I've been looking at paid invoices and I was thinking invoice table. So I need to change that to wrong table. All right. Now this should work. I knew, I, I knew that there was data. I knew I ran it. I just didn't know where the hell I ran it from. All right. There we go. Perfect. Invoice dates. Invoice quantity, there was three for this amount. This right here gives you a, using your having clause, it gives you a nice little report, nice little summary report. So that is the having clause. What else do we have? Um, I think that is it, guys. Oh, we didn't talk about the roll-up, did we? Um, summary qu query that uses a roll-up on a table. So... Um, let's see if we can find a good one. We can find a really, really good one. Roll up. Um, roll up is first so before we do it. So that's the last one we have to do. SQL roll up. So it's an extension of the group by um, clause, and it allows you to include extra rows that represent subtotals, uh, commonly referred to. Um, an aggregate row along with a grand total row. So let's find something that we could use for, for example, uh, with a roll up. Um, so probably not in something a little crazy, but just enough. Maybe we could grab our table that we just used or use something similar. Um, let's go back to this table. Well, let's we just use this table. We could probably use the same table again. Let, let me see what date range I have here. I want to see what date range that we have for paid invoices real quick. So let's do this. Select. Um, we'll select everything from paid invoice real quick. And we could do this. Let me see. Um, payment. Date. I want to see what kind of what we have here. Group by payment date. All right. We have six. We only have. We could do six. Okay, that's fine. I wanted to get an idea what we're working on. All right. So let's do this. Select. Um. Let me pull up my. So it helps to have a table in place. Uh, so let's copy this out. Cut that out. Throw that down here for my query. I need to run something. Because I need to see what I have. I know what my dates are now, so that's good. Um, that's fine, I'll leave it there. All right, perfect. This gets really funky after a while. All right, cool. Perfect. All right, let's do this. Um, right, so let's do select invoice date, um, payment date, or we don't have payment. Yeah, we do have payment date. Um, and then we could do a sum invoice total, and we'll call it invoice total. Oh. 
and then we'll do a summary of invoice total minus credit total. This is where I was going earlier. Minus payment total. Um, and we'll call it balance due from invoices where invoice date I'll say greater or equal to 2018-06-01 and we'll say group by invoice date payment date with roll up. There we go. So let's run this and see if it works. And it didn't like something. The table EX invoices. To, oh boy, here we go again. How many times am I going to do that? Paid invoices. Jeez. Let's try it again, guys. There we go. Took a while. So with the roll up, it allowed us to put. Now, as you see, some with the payment, we have some um, information, but this allows us to use the roll up. It provides a better output. Um, I think that's it on things that we wanted to learn how to do. All right, so let's go to the homework assignment real quick and see what we got here. Uh, page one ninety six. Or I should do this homework, but I just write it when you guys need it. Um, so question number one is write a select statement that returns one row for each vendor in the invoices table that contains these columns. The vendor ID column from the invoices table and the sum of the invoice total columns in the invoice table for that. All right, so pretty simple. Um, so let's do it here. Page 196, I'm not going to write that question down because that's all I have to write down. Question one of homework. All right, so what did it say? One row. So we're going to have to use the uh, AP database schema over here because it wants us to use the invoice table. And it's the invoice table right here. Now, my data probably be different. The results might be different because... I've deleted some stuff on mine, so don't be um, wondering like what's going on here. Um, so we want to write a select statement that contains these columns, the vendor ID. So do a select vendor ID um, from invoice table. And then we want a sum of the invoice total column. So invoice total um, from the invoice. And then from the uh, what invoice table for that vendor so invoices um now it said it should have 34 rows mine might not because i don't have all that but well, we wanted a single row it says it should return 34 rows that's a, a wrong answer because it says write a select statement that returns one row all uh, for each vendor in the invoices table. Hmm. That's weird. Um, let me see here. Uh, I forgot to give it invoices table. Sum the invoice column in the invoices table for that vendor. That's well. Here's the thing. If you sum everything, hold on. Let's see what I have in there. That's the question. Do have multiple vent oh you know what vendor id that's giving me everything I wonder if i group it yeah so you need to group by 
if you don't group by, which I didn't group by originally, so if you don't group by, then you get everything. I mean, you get one record, and that's not what we want. So you need to do the group by in order to get everything. Um, also, let's order by too. That way we can get a good understanding of what we're doing here. There we go. Now we have 25. The um, only reason is I don't have 34 rows because I've deleted some stuff. And my other class is by testing this stuff out. But as you see here, if you write the query like this and submit it, I'll know it's right. I don't care about the results. All I'm worried about is you write the query right. So page 196, question one, that is how you do that. Um, question number two, uh, write a select statement that returns one row for each vendor that contains these columns. Uh, vendor name and the payment total columns. So you're gonna write this query the same way as number two, but you're gonna use a different column name, okay? So identify what the name of the column is and you'll be good. So thanks for watching guys. This is homework, well, this is exercise lab uh, number two for the second part of the assignment. Good luck guys and have a great week. Bye for now.